Mandel here, and uh, well, it's dinner time at the Montoya house, and uh, summer is finally gone, and it's starting to cool off. Weather's quite nice today. It's about, uh, I think, right now it's about 21 degrees centigrade. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit right now, but we're on the metric system here. Anyway, um, uh, tonight we decided to make some pizza. Uh, it's been a, it's been a while since we've made pizza here because it's too hot in the summer. And that also explains why I don't have many videos every summer. So please forgive me for not putting out so many videos during the summertime, but hey, it's pretty hot. We're gonna get started. Mia's gonna make a, a margarita pizza because that's basically all she likes. So she's gonna make a uh, pizza. I'm gonna prep the oven. All right, go ahead, Mia. Let's see. So uh, while she's doing this, uh, we're gonna talk about about the, the three most common errors I see sometimes uh, uh, people making when people start making pizza. Uh, one of the one of the common errors is is uh, not using enough flour and using too much flour. They they, they kind of go hand in hand, right? Uh, and actually, Mia's kind of demonstrating one 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 thing. Is sometimes what we should do is drench the whole thing in flour. So what I'm saying is people sometimes don't use enough flour. And this is this is this what what I'm talking about. This is a lot of flour, isn't it? It's too much flour? No, it isn't. Right now at this stage, this is what you should be doing. So go ahead, Mia, continue continue what you're doing. So what you should be doing is using a huge bed of flour at the beginning. And this is uh, this is uh, really important because a lot of people will try to just use a sprinkling of flour uh, on their surface, and uh, you'll miss some spots, right? But if you put a, if you use a lot of flour, you're gonna you're gonna give it get it get an even coating of flour all over the pizza. And then what I what you want to do is once you get somewhat of a circle like Mia's got here, you're gonna take it off the bed of flour, give it a uh, and take it to a surface that has no flour. So go ahead and take it over there, Mia, and show them what what we're talking about. Okay. So now, now uh, Mia is going to be working with this thing here, and what what we all what we see down here is there's a, there's plenty of flour here. In fact, she can p even pick this up and throw some of that away, right? Because uh, there's still a, like a nice little even coating. So at this point, we don't want to use too much flour. So when I say that error is is both not not using enough flour and using too much flour, that's the same error just in two different parts. So. Keep that in mind. Use plenty of flour when you get started, and uh, oh, you can stretch out a little bit wider, Mia, because these are, these are going to be these can be much bigger pieces. I think. And so that is an error. So keep that in mind. Use use plenty of flour when you first push out your your pie, and then when you move it move it, get rid of push off all the excess flour, and and then just use uh, just use a, a surface that almost has no flour because uh, the bottom of the dough is already very lightly and evenly coated, so you're, you're good to go, okay? So, so right now Mia's, Mia's pie is about perfect there. So she's probably, there's not, probably not too much flour there, I think, because we wiped some off, okay? And uh, let me just prep this oven. Mia's gonna do her toppings now. Second error that uh, often people make is has to do with timing, and there's kind of a coordination that goes on with timing. And what I want to say, and uh, me, Anna, if you can get get me in here, is uh, so right now my oven has no flame. Okay, there's no flame in there, but the flame's going to be up. So. So let's imagine this this is the timeline and your your this is the heat rising in your oven and this is the flame rising in your oven. So there's a peak on both when when the heat is at at a at an excellent range right around 950 degrees or between 850 to 950 and the flame is in is in full form. So that timeline and and the heat and the flame reaching a peak here, that's when you want to put your, your pizza in, or just before that peak. If, 
if you're getting it on the decline, when the flame or the heat is declining, and you throw your, your pizza in there, now you gotta add wood in, in there, or you're gonna have a longer bake time. And uh, both aren't gonna give you the best uh, results. So the best case is, is practice, 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 get the timing down. So now you can see, well, my, my oven has been preheated well enough, so we're good there, but, but it's still not hot enough just yet. So right about now, the flame is just starting to, starting to kick up, and uh, Mia's still working on the pizza there. So I think by the time the flame reaches full form and we get max heat in here, uh, the pizza's gonna be ready to go in. Okay. So that is uh, the, the second error that uh, I, uh, I uh, had to deal with myself, and uh, you know now now it's uh, it's uh, just kind of second nature that I I take a look at my oven, I uh, prepare what I'm going to be doing with my with my pizza, my next toppings. I get all those kind of things set up uh, in advance, so I match that timing on the timeline. Everything goes at the same time. Another, another big error that's often made is uh, not having your tools ready. Uh, there have been countless times in the past when I've, I think I've gotten everything ready and I, I launch a pizza into the oven only to realize I don't have something. I don't have my turning peel, for example, okay? Okay, that's ready to go in. And right now is a perfect example of the third most common error. I have no place to put that pizza when it comes out. So, uh, I'm gonna launch this into the oven and I'm gonna shout to my wife to bring me uh, the cutting board or something, okay? Uh, actually, I'm gonna send you to get the cutting board, okay? I'll toss that in, you can come back and finish cooking it, okay? Run, go get the cutting board, okay? Hey. Cutting board, yeah, the pizza, it's shaped like a pizza, pizza paddle, right? Yeah, go get that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna launch this in here, and uh... So, when I say, on, on the first error, that not enough uh, flour is used, uh, that, and too much flour is used, here's another instance when sometimes people use too much flour. The technique is to push your fingers in there, that gets you about that much flour on there. That is enough flour on the pizza peel, okay? It really is, okay? okay. okay this is my daughter's pizza, so I'm gonna let her cook that. Okay, so now we've got a pretty decent flame. I don't think it's as big as it could be, but um, it's, it's gonna be just fine. Okay, great, just put that right there. And come over here and cook your pizza. Okay, so uh, these dough balls here are 150 grams, and uh, these are kind of like paper plate size. So these are this is a great size to sell at a at a festival. You know, it's a one-person size. Any one person can eat one of these. So I guess I could have had more flame, but it's doing just fine, I think. Okay, right about now, it's got a lot of flux, so Mia's gonna pick up just one, one side. We're gonna take a look at the bottom. Oh, I see. Maybe the bottom's not that hot. Maybe right there, okay. So I am demonstrating. Uh, error, uh, error number two. But even though these errors happen, I mean, you're still gonna make pretty good pizza, and uh, I don't think anybody's gonna complain, to tell you the truth. Okay, so that's cooking nicely.
Error number four, I would say, is yet another error that people do. They think that once you put the pizza in there, it's just a matter of turning it and turning it. Well, you have a lot of balancing issues going on in a wood-fired oven. Uh, one side can be hotter than the other. Uh, the floor is cooler in some spots than other spots, so you constantly want to check the bottom of your pizza and to make sure it doesn't get overburned. If you start to see it charring up way too fast on the bottom and nothing's happened on the top yet, that's a good, that's a good indication that uh, you got a pretty hot floor and uh, how to take care of it is you finish the cooking off the floor and that you avoid those situations. Okay, so this pizza is done. So Mia's gonna take that out. I'm gonna just give her an assistance because there's not much space here, so let's take that out. Not much space here. This is a pretty tight space, so I'm just gonna help her pull that out. And uh, that is Mia's pizza. And that is her dinner. So um, uh, those are the, the, the four common errors that I, I can think of. There are other errors. Uh, as I think of them, I'll make another video about those. But uh, those are the errors. And uh, uh, tonight's dinner is pizza. And actually, I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make a few more pizzas, and uh, those will be uh, in in this video too. Okay, next on our dinner agenda is uh, I kind of call a carbonara pizza pizza, but it could be a breakfast pizza because it's basically bacon and prosciutto or or bacon uh, or an Italian bacon. So we, we've got that going on here. That's uh, my other daughter's favorite pizza, or one of her favorite pizzas. Uh, she's not so interested in in, uh, in some of the standard pizzas. So we're gonna make that right now. I've got a I've got a beautiful brown egg right there. That's ready to go. And uh, we're going to first make sure we don't make those those same errors. Okay. So error number two was timing. We talked about timing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my oven ready. With a piece of firewood that's gonna that should uh, give us some good flame by the time it's ready to go in. So make sure all the surfaces are clean. Okay, we're gonna make a slightly larger pizza. Uh, these dough balls uh, are about 270 grams each. So again, demonstrating the issues with uh, error number one is uh, not using enough flour. So here's, here is me using enough flour, okay? okay. Sometimes you run into bubbles, I like to pop my bowls because they'll, they'll turn into big black knots, okay? So again, I'm using plenty of flour. So don't be shy in this stage. But this stage, we're going to uh, be using less flour. So I even wipe it off as I go in this stage. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. So this. This pizza is fairly simple. We got here some pre cut bacon. Actually, what I like to do is add a little olive oil first. Okay, then prosciutto goes on. No, this is not prosciutto. Uh, I'm, I'm mixing that up with the uh, prosciutto. This is, I meant to say, uh, pancetta. Okay, and you want to make a little area here uh, with your with your bacon where the egg can't escape. Okay, so put that right there in the middle, and add. Light here. Let's 
So a good generous amount of Parmigiano. And I think that's the part that really gives you the feeling you're having something about carbonara. Now you see uh, the oven there is uh, pretty hot and the flame is pretty strong there. So I think we're good to go there. Again, now we're we're in the business of not using not using too much flour, okay? And the reason for that is uh, if you've ever had a pizza with too much flour, you'll notice that uh, they often are very bitter. The flour, as it burns, leaves a, a very bitter residue. So there you go. Okay, so this should be a pretty quick cooking pie. Now that we uh, we fixed our error number two, so we are now uh, we have it, the timing just perfect. The heat, the flame, and the pizza are all ready at the same time. Just coordinating, right? Okay. Any bottles not too bad, we'll leave it there. Now, I don't tilt these pizzas too much because it's got an egg on it. <laughs> I sent my daughter inside with the uh, the cutting board. I'm gonna have to uh, carry this inside. But uh, that is a finished pizza, and uh, that is dinner for uh, my wife and my daughter. And I'm gonna make me a uh, spicy pepperoni pizza in a minute. Okay, and now for my dinner. Uh, a spicy uh, pepperoni that uh, I hand sliced today. I hand sliced all that. Actually, uh, my daughter also finished off the slicing for me when I had to go do other things. And I have some fresh cut mushrooms, which my youngest daughter, Mia, cut those. And got some thin sliced uh, onions. I'm gonna throw that on. And uh, so, again, gonna prep my oven. Make sure that we uh, coordinate all those things. So, the oven will be ready to go. Okay. Okay, so while that oven is uh, getting piping hot, Okay, today's dough was kind of a, like, a spur of the moment. A couple of days ago, I said, well, yeah, let's just have some pizza. And, uh, and uh, so I put together, this one is a 65% a uh, hydration. So I'm not really beating this up at all. It's just, uh, I think the, one of the, the things is this and my pan is shaking, so. And uh, so this dough didn't really get balled uh, 24 hours ago. It got balled just uh, probably around noon, or about, no, about 12.30. So it only sat in balls for about five hours. So you see it, you see it kind of fighting me a little bit. I could, uh, I could let this uh, rest in balls probably another 
four hours and uh, it would probably stretch really easily. Yeah, but yeah, that'll be, that'll do. Okay, so I got my uh, my New York pizza sauce. This is, uh, if you like New York style pizza, uh, this, uh, this pizza sauce is uh, straight from those guys in New York. Um, if you want to see my recipe, uh, check out check it out on on my channel. And uh, I'm sure you'll love it too. New York's New York, New York pizza sauce is just the best pizza sauce in the world. I mean, I've been to Italy, and you know, in in totality, the best pizza in the world is in Naples. I mean, hands down. But it gets even better when you add. A, had a little touch of home, right? And uh, so, and America's my home, and I guess I I have a few uh, a few biases towards things that uh, I grew up with, and one of them is New York style pizza sauce. Even though I grew up in California, uh, there was a there was a really great uh, uh, place nearby. I can't even remember the name, but uh, that place they had a coal-fired oven, and uh, their sauce was just incredible. Anyway, uh, check out that sauce recipe on my uh, my channel. I'm gonna put some of those fresh mushrooms here and there. Okay, sprinkling of the onions. So this time we've got a, an excellent flame, and uh, I'm very confident that the floor heat has reached a uh, uh, what what it, it should be at. I think the floor probably runs around 800 something degrees. Every once in a while it gets in the 900s. It'll cook a little too fast on the bottom, but I think this is doing quite well. Yeah, it is kind of cooking a little fast on the bottom. Let's see how tender it is. Huh? The dough. Make sure we ate the uh, the margarita and the the carbonara pizza, and those were really delicious. So this is good. Probably, yep, needs to be finished off on the top. So this was uh, error number four that people miss uh, that I'm trying to avoid doing. Don't leave it on the floor if the floor is too hot. And that, that is it done. Okay, I'll bring that over here to the light. Sorry, I didn't bring the other pizza to the light before, but uh, that looks beautiful. I love it. And I can't wait to eat it. Okay, well, anyway. That's it for, for my pizza making in this video. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you like videos like this, uh, consider subscribing, and I put out content uh, a lot more often once the weather cools down, which it has, and that's why I'm back. So until next video, uh, hope your pizza treats you well.